In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to color grade your videos like this using just one light in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm shooting this on the iPhone 15 Pro Max in ProRes. Now I'm not gonna be doing this tutorial on my PC. Instead, this video is sponsored by MSI and I'm gonna be using the MSI Stealth 16 Studio Laptop to do this entire edit. That involves some 3D work, masking work that this laptop is capable of doing in real time. So let's get started. This entire thing is gonna be done in DaVinci Resolve. So let's launch that up. First things first, set up the timeline so right click create new timeline uncheck that box there go to format and make sure you're in 4k and recording at whatever frame rate you need for me is 30 fps and click create after that import in your clip and cut it up to exactly the parts that you need drag it in and get into your edit panel so i'm going to hop into the color panel here i'm going to quickly convert it from log to rec 709 i made a full tutorial on how to do that so click that up here somewhere if you guys want to know how to do that in detail i'm going to skim past this really quick in this video now I'm not gonna be touching these three nodes for the rest of this video until the end. So what I'm gonna do is select all three of these nodes, right click and create compound node. Rename that to your grade. Now I'm gonna be doing these edits using DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the paid version of DaVinci, but I'm gonna show you two alternates. One's gonna be for the free version and one's gonna be for the paid version. You're gonna create a node before your grade node and you're gonna rename this node to be depth map. Head over to your settings and then search for depth map drag and drop that on and you'll see your screen turn into this sort of silhouette of white gray and black so there you go all my depth information is there i can further customize this if i come in here adjust map levels far limit near limit basically what i'm essentially trying to do here is isolate myself which is the subject from the background so i can affect the background without doing anything to me with the depth map done i can now create a new node and i'm going to rename this relight now this is the heaviest effect I've ever used in DaVinci Resolve and honestly speaking, it is very, very hard to run even on my PC. So the fact that I can do this on my laptop is pretty mind blowing. Let me talk about the specs on the MSI Stealth 16 Studio really quick. With this, I'm getting the GeForce RTX 4060 laptop GPU combined with the Intel Core i7 processor, which is why I'm able to do this so smoothly. Something I love about the MSI Stealth Studio 16 is its lightweightness, portability and slimness which means I can basically take it anywhere like a park and continue grading my video from there. Also, what's very essential to color grading is a color accurate display. And this comes with MSI True Color, which is P3 and 100% sRGB, which means I don't have to worry about the color accuracy of this display. Another bonus that I really like is that it's not a glossy display, which means it doesn't reflect way too much when I'm outdoors. So for Relight, go into your effects again and search for Relight drag and drop that effect on and check that out. If I move this around like I am right now, you can actually see the depth information, the light, shadows and darkness information moving in real time. Luckily for me, this comes with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 laptop GPU with the Intel Core i7 processor, which is why I'm able to do all of this in real time. It's a very GPU intensive task. You're actually creating physics in real time. It knows how the light works in real time and you're creating that light from scratch. Pretty crazy. The real life feature is actually using AI to get a proper depth map of my face as well. This laptop is able to handle that perfectly. It does come pre-installed with the NVIDIA Studio drivers, which give me features like the Dynamic Boost 2.0, which actually intelligently shifts power in the system for maximum performance. These drivers have been optimized to run creative softwares like video editing and 3D, which is actually a combination of what I'm doing in this video. You can actually customize this however you wish. Directional light, then we have point source lights, which was the first one we were looking at. And lastly, you have the spotlight, which is what we'll be using for this video. So I'm gonna uncheck the relight map preview and then that's gonna turn it off. And you're gonna see nothing's really happening, but that's because we haven't added on any lighting or anything like that. We just have the information for now. So what I'm gonna do is head over to the HDR tab and increase my exposure and you can see as I move this around that the light is actually emitting from it look at the plant and how the shadows are moving around it's doing all of this in real time even if I switch to a point source light you can actually see how the light affects me as a subject but for this scene I want to create a spotlight sort of look on the guitar behind me so I'm gonna switch over to the spotlight so we're gonna increase the brightness a little bit raise up the light up there and then we can play around with a few of the settings but you can already see the light is 
projecting onto the background. Now, one thing to notice is that the light is also falling on the front of my shirt, which physically should not make sense with that type of lighting. So we're gonna fix that using our depth map and that's why we made it. So right now my depth map was disabled. What I'm gonna do is enable my depth map. And then from the origin there, I'm gonna draw a line to our relight. And then from the green node of our depth map connected to the blue of the relight. When I do that, it's basically giving the depth information from the depth map over to relight for it to use that as an outline. Now what I'm gonna do is come to my gain under my primaries tab and make the gain really, really blue. And you can see it's affecting me as well, which we don't want. So go into your depth map settings and make sure it's inverted at the top. Now you can actually see that in real time, it is only affecting the background and the lights only on the background, which is exactly what we want. Now you could stop here. You've basically added in a fake light with correct shadows and correct physics in your background without affecting your image in a negative way. And yeah, it's ready to export. But I'm gonna show you a simpler way of doing this because this can be kind of heavy, especially with the depth map information. It's actually so cool that after shooting the video, I can control the lighting. So for example, I don't want the light to be on the right side anymore, no problem. I'm gonna move it on to the left side just by moving that. And look at how the shadows move in real time. So quick recap, we created a depth map to get the depth information. And then we created a relight to apply that depth information to. And the relight is what we use to control the lighting in our background. Now method number two is gonna be a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is get rid of these two nodes completely. We're gonna recreate a new node before our grade node. And I'm gonna call this mask. Now for this, I'm gonna go over to the magic mask at the bottom. We're gonna make sure we go to the frame where my hands are maximum extended outwards, maximum movement. And then I'm gonna slowly start pressing and holding and drawing around myself to mask myself out. Once I'm done with the selection mask, I'm gonna alt click and select the outside of it. It draws in red. This I'm telling it basically don't select this area. After I'm done, press shift H to see your selection. Now it looks nice, but not great. So change the quality to better and then zoom in to see if there's any missing details. I think the hair is done really, really well. I can increase the blur radius a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is press the backwards and forward arrow, which is gonna track this too. Look at the tracking speed there. That is really, really fast. And this is why you need a pretty powerful GPU to be able to do stuff like that. Now I know this method is supposed to be the free and easy one and I am using Magic Mask, which is paid, but there is a way to do these kind of masks uh, using just power windows. I'm gonna link a tutorial from someone else down below for you guys to check that out. All right, Shift H to hide the mask again. We're gonna create a new node and I'm gonna call this background. Now this method is not gonna use Relight because Relight is pretty heavy. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this without Relight, which is what I showed you in the beginning of the video. So what you can do here is hop into your power windows tap on the curve tool and just start drawing the shape of the light that you want. This is not gonna make these shadows as accurate as Relight, but if you don't have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve or your laptop is not as powerful as mine, for example, then you can just do this for free using Power Windows. And with the shape drawn, I'm gonna go over to the bottom and outside I'm gonna expand that out for feathering and inside I'm gonna expand that out for feathering as well. Hop into our HDR and increase exposure and you can actually see it basically does the same thing as Relight without the realistic shadows. So to fix the light falling onto me again, we created the mask. We're gonna take the blue and connect it to the blue again. What I'm gonna do is go over to the mask layer and click on invert mask. And just like that, you can see that is affecting the background only exactly how Relight works. Uh, but without that heavy GPU intensive process. Now you can feel free to go around all different types of shapes that you wanna draw on. If you wanna make like blinds uh, or some kind of textured background with these lights, you can do that. You can control the opacity of each, which makes this really great to create very interesting, unique effects for your background, especially if you have only one light to work with. So here I'm just quickly going through to create some different effects, different styles. You can obviously affect the lighting as well by moving the shadow slider within that node. For the final look, I actually ended up adding the relight back in again because the MSI Stealth Studio 16 could handle it. And then I also added a gradient to bring up the shadows from the right side. Now, lastly, the iPhone footage doesn't really have a lot of depth, especially because you're not shooting in cinematic mode, it's just standard log mode. So I'm gonna add a little bit of background blur to make it look a little bit more cinematic. So create a new node and we're gonna call this blur. Go into your blur and sharpening at the bottom and we're gonna increase the blur number. So if you go lower, it gets sharper, you go higher, it gets blurrier. So I'm gonna put it extremely high just to show you the result really quick. Make sure you connect your mask from blue to the blue of the blur 
blur and it's gonna apply it only to the background. So you can see if I increase this, it's gonna make the background sharper. If I decrease it, it's gonna make it blurrier. So we're gonna increase it to a more realistic number at 0. 0.58 maybe. Now recap of method number two, we created a mask and created some background power windows to control the lighting behind us and then we applied the mask on top so it only affects the background. Now, no, I sped through a lot of that. I tried not to make it too overwhelming. So there you have it. Turn any boring footage with one single light into a very unique and interesting set. After the fact, all open to your creativity. I also used this laptop to create a meta-human version of myself over on Product Nation. So make sure you guys check that out because this laptop is honestly a beast. Once again, thanks MSI for sending over this beast for me to do these types of edits. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.